Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to discuss about wastewater management. So I previously made a video on wastewater management. So if you haven't checked it out, you may check it out. So let's get started for this. So we discussed about uh, primary and preliminary treatment and we moved on to secondary treatment. So this slide I have already discussed in my previous video and we just uh, touched upon some of the points that are present here as you can see and we talked about the major two components of secondary treatment which are basically aerobic decomposition and anaerobic decomposition also these decompositions are carried out in different sort of systems all right so we'll start off uh, from this slide as you can see so we'll talk about some of the systems that are involved for these decompositions to be carried out all right so there are basic two systems as you can see so this is fixed film fixed film growth system and the other one is suspended growth system the fixed film growth systems we have trickling filters or biofilters we have rotating biological contactors we have fluidized beds and under suspended growth systems we have activated sludge and oxidation ditches so I'll be discussing about all of these systems in detail. So let's start from this. So talking about these secondary treatments, as I told you, these have certain sort of systems and we'll discuss, start off with first system, uh, which is the trickling filters, which comes under fixed film bioreactors. All right. So talking about the fix, uh, trickling filters, uh, this has a biofilter, uh, which is basically a filter with att attached biomass on the filter media. Uh, it helps in the biofiltration process. It is basic. It is a basic filtration process for biological degradation of contaminants rather than physical straining. Also, microbes present on the biofilter grows over time, and has uh, some sort of structural uh, definition. As you can see, it has uh, a cylindrical concrete tank of about 80, 8 to 60, 16 meter diameter, and has a depth of about 2 to 3 meter. It contains vertical cylindrical columns of diameter 50 to 100 millimeter to give a specific surface of around 100 meter square. And these have a column that are packed with support media such as stones, wood, shave, uh, shavings, twigs, plastics or wooden slates. Also microorganisms adhering to the packaging matrix forms a biological layer. All right. So all the support media, uh, media, uh, media which is present or which are made up of stones or wood. Wood media play a huge role for these microorganisms to stick. All right. So moving on from there. So we have this sort of picture for the trickling filters we just studied about. So this is a huge uh, thing. As you can see, it requires a lot of area and it has a rotatory mechanical system. All right. So it rotates. All right. So on from there. So let's just talk about some of its functions. So its function is the organic matter in the wastewater diffuses through the biological film where it gets metabolized. A conventional trickling filter bed should remove about 70 to 75 to 95 percent of the POD and 90 to 95 percent of the suspended solids at organic loading rates of 0.06 to 0.12 POD per meter cube per day. So Downflowing effluent with reduced POD is collected at the bottom and passed to a secondary clarifier or a secondary sedimentation tank. And a portion is often recycled to the biofilter to improve hydraulic distribution of the wastewater with the filter. So these are some of the functions that are involved in trickling filters. So this is nothing but in, uh, that is basically involved for reducing the BOT on all of the suspended solids. All right. Moving on from there. Coming to the second type of uh, system, which is the rotate, uh, rotating biological contractors or RPCs. So, uh, so RPCs are fixed film reactor similar to biofilters where microorganisms to attach the support media. And RBC, the support media are slowly rotating disks that are partially submerged in flowing wastewater in the reactor. As you can see, so, discs, uh, so the disk is the support material here and the disk is of 2 to 3 meter in diameter are made up of synthetic material which can be polystyrene or PVC and they are closely spaced about 1 to 2 centimeters spacing between disks and disk increases uh, overall surface area. All right. 
so as you can see so this is the picture perfect picture for this so this is the real time picture of this as you can see so on from this so here comes the function of all of these so biofilm attached on the fixed film are aerated from the air when the film is out of the water and within the liquid when it is submerged also oxygen is transferred to the wastewater by surface turbulence when it is submerged it is created by the disc rotation and biofilm is locked off by shearing force created by rotation mechanism and they travel to sedimentation tank in the same manner described for biofilters or trickling filters that we have done before also like trickling filters sludge from the settling tank is not recycled and typically removes 85% of the bot in about 5 days and removal of dissolved minerals such as phosphorus nitrogen non biodegradable organics is minimal and which may require tertiary treatment also this process is followed by disinfection step that can provide substantial but not complete removal and bacteria also coming to the third type of system which is the fluidized bed system which is the last for the fixed film growth systems which is the which was the third one of the fixed film growth system so talking about fluidized bed system it is a relatively recent innovation and it has support matrix or material which is composed of sand anthracite reticulated foam and activated carbon with large surface area and the biofilm adheres to uh, adheres over the support matrix and the support matrix is fluidized by upflow of effluent through the reactor and excess biomass is regularly withdrawn from the sub, uh, support matrix and it enables high rates of treatment so this is how it's carried out and this is the fluidized bed system uh, this is just nothing but the difference is the fluidized thing or it uh, gives a upper current or upper flow of effluent through the reactor so that the excess biomass is regularly withdrawn from the support matrix so talking about the second part of secondary treatment or the second type of system second type of system which was suspended growth system we have already talked about two systems so one is fixed film growth system and this is suspended growth system so under suspended growth system we have first one is the activated sludge or the dispersed growth reactor in this the biomass mixed with sewage is uh, the biomass mixed with the sewage in an aeration tank all right so the biomass is mixed with the sewage in an aeration tank as you can see this is a really good picture for this also biological aerobic process to degrade organic matters in both domestic and industrial waters or waste waters so all, uh, obviously these and thus the aerobic decomposition takes place uh, in excess of oxygen so that these may decompose the following substance also as you can see the dispersed growth reactor this is the aeration tank and all of the influent all right this is the effluent the effluent is something that is discharged out of the system influent is that something that is uh, brought into the system all right so this is the internal mixed liquid cycle this is the aeration tank and all of the air supply is given from here as you can see so this is then transferred to the final settling tank in which the uh, dirt or the whatever the suspended solids are present are uh, gets deposited at the bottom which we known as the sludge and then it is treated out so talking about the aerated sludge uh, this is not as simple as it looks so it involves a lot of uh, mechanism so we'll talk about that so an aeration tank or basin containing the mixed liquid a suspension of the waste water plus microorganism so basically it contains a uh, a uh, uh, huge quantity amount of waste water plus the microorganisms to degrade it also contents of the air aeration tank are mixed vigorously by aeration devices that supply oxygen to the biological suspensions so as we have seen the diagram which it has air supply at the bottom to supply air also aeration devices are some of the aeration devices that that are present inside the aeration tanks are submerged diffusers or biology uh, mechanical surface aerators so the submerged diffusers uh, uh, what they do is they inject large quantities of some uh, compressed air uh, through air blowers of effective length for an even distribution of air and whereas the mechanical surface aerators are considered uh, concerned they are used for introducing air by agitating the liquid surface 
they are they do the job by introducing the air by agitating the liquid surface and this mixture is stored and agitated vigorously and constantly to maintain the dissolved oxidation dissolved concentration oxygen concentration of about 2 to 4 mg per liter also the microorganisms consuming oxygen to satisfy their demand energy demand so that they can decompose the materials continuously over a long period of time also the cell growth provides new organisms for the self substance substance and continuation of the process so talking about this we have talked about the aeration tank system and how these are regulated and how these are how the oxygen thing is distributed evenly in the system so moving on from there so the portion of the biological or 20 percent of the sludge from the sludge digester having active microbes is recycled and reseeded to the aeration tank so whatever sludge has been are deposited in the slug tank about 20% of that is recycled which contains some of the active microbes and rest and rest all of them is decomposed or used off in some other source so the rest to 80% the rest 80% is used as manure or any other biomass but the 20% is recycled which contains active microbes and are brought back into the aeration tank again so the to maintain a high mix uh, to have maintain a high mixed liquid suspended solids uh, to basically to maintain a high uh, high mixed liquid suspended solids which contains 2 to 5 gram per liter microbial population about active sludge uh, or active or uh, the sludge which is recycled contains active microbes so what are these microbes so we have it in our next point the activated sludge is predominated by bacteria protozoa aquatic invertebrates which are worms or rotifers and this recycling is absent in fixed film growth systems. So this is only prevalent in dispersed growth systems or activated sludge method. So the maintenance of optimal MLSS or mixed liquid suspended solids and aeration period are the key parameter to consider while designing the reactor. So the recycling of bio sludge is properly regulated and done by continuous duty suitable sludge recirculation pump. Also, excess sludge which is present is generated from a surplus microbial growth which is withdrawn regularly from the secondary clarifier to sludge drying beds to maintain the normal balance of the process. Alright, so the excess sludge which or the 80% of the sludge which is left, it is brought to the secondary clarifier and it is dried so that to maintain a uh, normal balance, optimum balance. For so as you can see, these are some of the terms involved in the sludge volume index so the next part which is which comes in the activity sludge is the sludge volume index so what is sludge volume index so it is basically a ratio of the percent of settled volume of sludge to the percent weight of mls mlss in grams so it indicates settles ability of the activated sludge or the we this uh, so this is how we calculate v into th thousand by mlss so this is just a formula you may remember there are no sort of numericals that come under this part but you this is just a term or, or a way of showing how the, we can calculate volume index also talking about the next part which is the flock formation so the flock forming microorganism feeds on organic matter in the waste water biodegradable and coagulate to form flocks that settle easily in the clarifiers flock formation of flocks is very important so so that it coagulates and settle down and become heavier and thus settle down in the clarifier tank and the retention time in the aeration uh, tank is about 3 to 8 hours the retention time varies based on the availability of BOD the retention time increases with higher BOD levels and BOD and COD of the effluent is reduced maximum to about 80% and 65% respectively also efficiency is the efficiency of the aeration tank is directly proportional to the pH, temperature, aeration, MLSS, culture, growth, concentration of rocks, wastewater and waste uh, water toxicity. So these are some of the important terms that you might need to remember for activated method. Also, this is a entire diagram. As you can see, we start from the preliminary step. This is the primary clarifier step. And this is the aeration tank in which is done. Then it, then the, uh, then it moves to the secondary clarifier where, uh, where all of the sludge gets removed or most part of the sludge is removed and this gets uh, accumulated here as you can see as dry pits 
and this is then the water which is present is disinfected with disinfecting agents so that it can be released so this was the secondary treatment we talked about all of the clarifiers in this so talked about again uh, clarifiers in detail so the clarifier would be uh, given as a gravity driven force in which the uh, it definitely works the same way as a sedimentation tank it's nothing different from any other sedimentation tank so it's a gravity driven uh, process and it works same principle of sedimentation as primary clarifiers also microorganisms here and heavy particulate matter and other solids settle to the bottom as secondary sludge and microorganisms must be separated from the treated waste water by sedimentation to produce clarified secondary effluent pumped by tertiary treatment so this is the thing so after the aeration tank it moves to the secondary clarifier in which uh, it forms another sludge which is really known as the secondary sludge also talking about the secondary biological sludge which is formed so this is the biological solids or biosolids removed during the secondary sedimentation which is pumped to the di sludge digester which basically or the sludge which is deposited here moves down to the sludge bed or uh, normally it combines with the primary sludge of sludge processing and sludge digesters and some of the sludge will be recirculated back to the aeration tank to stimulate activated sludge process to remove as many uh, pollutants and suspended solids as possible so let's just keep this video till here i'll be continuing the next video from here and stay tuned and thank you for watching this video